Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. Want to talk about one of the biggest impact plays from Sunday's loss to the Chargers, one play that really got Pittsburgh back into this game. That was Miles Killebrew's punt block early in the fourth quarter, setting up a Steelers touchdown that really kind of turned the tide and nearly complete the comeback for Pittsburgh. Killebrew's second block of the season. Let's talk about why it was effective and how that block happened. And to do that, I want to go back to the play before, because remember, that block punt came on a re-kick, on a re-punt. There was a penalty the first time, and this is the play here, the, the initial punt. And it's, generally speaking, a safe pressure here, uh, more of a return-minded uh, setup here for Pittsburgh by Danny Smith. And so we'll run this thing through, and I wanted you to pay attention to two things here as we kind of go back and forth. And I'm watching this with some different tape, uh, a different way I get tape here. So it might be a little glitchier than normal. I apologize in advance here, but a six man pressure here from Pittsburgh. Ultimately, you see Killebrew lined up here in a different spot compared to where he'll be for the actual punt block. And so um, one thing to note though, from right here, watch uh, UG three and Derek Watt and, and, and um, actually uh, that's Benny Snell as well. They're going to run this kind of three man game here on the snap of the football. So, so overall still a, a safe pressure here. Um, not an all-out block, obviously, but you're going to watch um, Watt and Gilbert and Snell kind of run this game where Watt's going to slant down, um, UG3 is going to loop around, and Snell is going to slant down as well. So that's one element to watch there. And by the way, you can see the up back there on that play, taking special note of that. And so I want also to check out Arthur Millette to the bottom of the screen right here. Kind of looks like he might be coming in the block here, and then at the last second runs back out to to vice and, and jam this gunner. So that's the initial play here. The, um, the punt block or the, the play before the punt block on the penalty that uh, creates the re-kick and the actual punt block for Pittsburgh. Now let's look at the actual punt block. And I think it's interesting that this happened on the re-kick. So Pittsburgh's already shown one thing and they're immediately having a kick after that. And so you kind of get the chance to see and feel out how the Chargers played things initially and then kind of build off of that. I think these punt blocks are very much like how a defensive coordinator would scheme up blitzes or an offensive coordinator would run would run one play and then um, run a different one off of that. A constraint play is what we call it. And so you see the punt block in motion here. And I want to start with a couple different things, a couple things to look at on this play. Remember the first uh, the play we just looked at, Arthur Millette kind of fake like he was going to blitz and kind of come in line here and then walk back out. On this example, he, he blitzes late, and he's coming off there from his uh, jammer spot to blitz late, and that influences the block here we'll see in a moment. So that's the first thing I want you guys to look at, and then once we get to the end zone view, we'll look at the actual line twist and game they play uh, on the snap. And so... This time around, it's, it becomes an eight-man pressure with Millette blitzing. So you got all these guys here, all seven guys here are going to uh, rush on this play. Different alignments. You see Killebrew now inside. Snell, who was the right end before, is now on the left side. UG3 is on the edge. And so um, it's, it's a totally different picture than what um, Pittsburgh was presenting the time before. And so what happens here essentially is these two guys, Tuska and Snell, they're going to basically just do safe rushes here, kind of contain, generally speaking, the same for Derek Watt in UG3. And so I really want you to pay close attention to uh, Robert Spillane, Killebrew, Miles Killebrew, and Marcus Allen. They're going to run this this game with this twist here where Killebrew is going to shoot the A-gap. Um, Spillane's going to shoot the A-gap just like a defensive line stunt. And Marcus Allen's going to come around and loop around into this B-gap. And again, Arthur Millett's coming off the right side here. I think that's a really important part of this play. So I'll kind of run things through. Snap of the football. You see Killebrew shoot shoot into the A-gap. Spillane shoot into this A-gap. They're going to basically trade assignments here. And Marcus Allen looping over into this B-gap. And so um, what this does, it creates this, this mismatch here. Well, you have two blockers for, for two rushers here. You have three on three here with Millette coming down. That's pulling the eyes of the up back, the personal protector on this play. And so that is creating a three on three here. But the left guard to the left of the long snapper here, when he sees Spillane you know, shoot away. He's getting his eyes to the left side. And I think that's partially influenced by the game that was played the, the snap before when UG3 looped over as Derek Watt and Benny Snell uh, crashed down. And then maybe it's influenced by the feel or the verbal cue of Millette coming off the edge as well, unexpectedly. And so what happens here, basically, you only have two blockers responsible for three rushers. They double team the, the long snapper and the right guard on this play and allows Killebrew through for an easy path to the punter I think it's Ty Long and for the block. And so I run this thing the whole way through without having to stop it. But you'll watch um, Killebrew and Spillane stunt. There's confusion up front. You're just looking for one guy to fail, one guy to get confused. And that's really good execution on the Steelers' part.
Again, just to kind of recap a couple of things to consider, um, had Millette not blitzed on this play and rushed off the edge, that up back probably cleans up all the messes here created in the middle. But because Millette came off the edge late, you see that pull the eyes of the left tackle, which forced the up back to pick up UG3 on this play and did not allow those guys to have a chance to maybe correct the mistakes made by the left guard on this play, and uh, Killebrew was allowed to run free. And so you look at that factor. Also consider the fact the right guard on this play, Drew Tranquil, who had missed the entire week of practice due to being on the reserve COVID list. And so he was not getting those reps. And so I think you really kind of attack and exploit some of those guys that have not gotten the reps because of injury or in this this case, because they were on the COVID list. And so um, you kind of find who the weakness weaknesses are and who you could kind of confuse and exploit. And so on this play, again, you're seeing the, 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 the guys here slant in, into the A-gap and uh, just create that kind of confusion and havoc. And Killebrew did a really good job to, to squeeze through this hole, get skinny. And then I'll show the photo of it here now. Um, get his thumbs together, hands up, and, and block the punt down. Not make contact with the punter, though the block punt would have negated any potential penalty there. But good technique from Killebrew. Um, you know, hands up, thumbs together, kind of spread out a little bit, fingers wide. And um, and, and finishing the, the, the play and the block, I think, kicked off, uh, kicked off his forearm. And so um, that allowed the, the actual block, the execution of it. And then, unfortunately, kind of bounced out of bounds and do not allow Killebrew to, to score this one. And he deserves a score because he's not scored here on either of his block punts. Um, they scored on the first one, but he did not do it. And then this ball, unfortunately, rolled out of bounds. So I think a key of this play, Millette coming down. And then, of course, the game inside creating confusion. Uh, I think that was partially set up by the first punt that was uh, negated by penalty where Pittsburgh kind of ran that safe pressure, but still ran a bit of a game that kind of probably influenced the left guard here a little bit. And again, you're just looking for one guy to get confused, one guy to be unsure, one guy to not carry out his assignment. You do that, you get a chance And Pittsburgh in this play, uh, executed their chance and got the block. And, and that was a massive play of this game. So you guys know my thoughts. I mean, Danny Smith certainly has his criticism and I've been critical of him at times, but uh, nobody, and I mean, nobody schemes up pump block schemes better than one Danny Smith and Pittsburgh has two of them this year, both by my, by uh, Miles Killebrew, and this was a, a huge one. It was the reason why they basically won that game week one, and the reason why they came back and took the lead in, in this game. And had they won it, then I think you could have really cited both pump blocks as being um, game changing plays and 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 major reasons why uh, the Steelers won and they got that victory week one. Unfortunately, could not do it in week eleven against the Chargers. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you guys have not done so already. Again, thanks for watching. Enjoy the holidays, and we'll talk to you soon.